Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller along with Robert Glasscock. We're going to dive into something that is current as this is being recorded in July of 2023. And that is a sign change with the nodes of the moon. As we're sitting here right now, the last about 18 months, the north node of the moon has been in the sign of Taurus. And that means the south node, of course, opposite that in Scorpio. And that Scorpio South Node has historically been associated with times of conflict and disruption and riots. And that's exactly what's going on in several places of the world, even as we're recording this. No real surprise to astute astrologers. But what happens when the North Node moves from peaceful Taurus, remember, they move backwards, into fiery Aries, while at the same time, the Scorpionic South Node moves into peace, love, harmony, and balance Libra. And folks, listen, we're going to kind of a little bit of an alert here. We are going to go to the shadow side of this aspect, and we're going to talk about that. And then toward the end, we're going to bring it back so that those of us listening to this podcast want to live on our highest timeline. We want to live the positive side of these things. We're going to get there. You just have to, we got to go through the tunnel and then it's going to break free. All right. So stay with us for that. So Robert, let's talk about this. It's going to affect the next 18 months of our life. So that takes us into 2025. What do we have to look forward to? What a question. And such a great question. Uh, you know, the nodes are associated in astrology with karma, among other things. And where they are now in Taurus and Scorpio has a lot to do with the world's values, money, what a nation or a people or a community or a person values in themselves. And so we see the conflict between the Taurus and the Scorpio as both of those now are regressing into, respectively, Aries for the North Node and Libra for the South Node. Individually, even, we're look, we have gone through a long period of assessing our values. In our personal lives, you see it in the polarization of people. And especially over the last several years, the pandemic potentially affected everybody on Earth. So that set up a dynamic, a psychological, emotional, spiritual dynamic. So it brought the world together in a very tangible way, physical health. So now we're facing a tremendous upheaval around the world. And as these nodes go into Aries and Libra, it's a sign of war and peace, a sign of individuality, me against the world, or negotiating, cooperating, and coexisting. And it's very tricky. And Pluto right now is transiting back the last into the last degrees of Capricorn. So it's also kind of touching on this as well. So I think we are in for some incredibly trying times just from the nodes. Uh, and this goes on for decades because of Pluto. These major, massive changes, more and more, we are having to acknowledge, I think, that we are one human race, that we'd better get along no matter what the religions or the politics are simply to survive. So I think that that's the underlying message here. It's pretty uh, critical. But there's always the hope that through the Libra South Node, which it's getting ready to enter here, that's the weak spot. The South Node is where you're vulnerable. The North Node is where you're good and where you've brought over. All right, so the North Node now is going into Aries. We're good at war. Everybody's good at war. But the South Node in Libra shows a weakness in negotiation and cooperation and coexistence. And that's the big challenge. And it's very frightening to people to see the old authorities, like religious and politics, fading and becoming something else in the light of all of this new collective, one world, one planet reality. That's about as ominous as... Uh... I had done on fun astrology. <laughs> it's, did you? Did you really? I did. Yeah. And uh, good. I'm glad that one's kind of already agree. aired. I wanted to do it before we did ours because I just wanted to put my own take down on it. Yeah. But I like to go back and look at history. So let me just give you the last hundred years of this aspect. 
Let me give you this and fasten your seatbelt. Listen quickly because I'm going to go fast. All right. The last one was 2004, 2006. That was the second Iraqi invasion. The first one happened a year after the previous North Node Aries, South Node Libra in 1986 and 1988. Robert, you were just getting started in astrology in 1965. You remember what happened in 1968 in America. I do. Wasn't that sex, drugs, and rock and roll? And it was also when we took out Martin Luther King, RFK. Ah, We had the race riots. Kent State Ah, was a year later. And what about Vietnam? Ah, The one before that was 1949-1950. The Korean War began in 1950. Then we had a reprieve. 1930-31 to was the bridge year between the two world wars. But 1912-1913, to World War I began right after that aspect. And ironically, if you go all the way back to the American Revolutionary War, same thing. This aspect was within the last two years of the fight for freedom for the United States. Do you get the theme? You know, Thomas, you were touching on something that we touched in in those solar arc practicums at Kepler College. You were in them. And that's the idea that uh, these upcoming elections, no matter which way they go, are likely to be met with resistance. And the first thing we talked about in those solar arc practicums five years ago now was the potential for civil war. And we said, now that we've seen that aspect, which matures and becomes partile, basically on the day of the elections next year, and right around there, anyway, this is a solar arc we're talking about. And we said both a potential for a civil war and getting drawn into an international conflict. So there's two wars. This is Gemini on the seventh cusp of the United States chart. So we were looking at that then five years ago, and we said, now it's a matter of watching events. Are we moving closer to that or are we pulling back from that? And we talked then about we had predicted that Biden would win. And we said that would be a somewhat a pulling back. But as we all agreed, it wasn't going to make that much difference. And indeed, it has it in terms of polarization. That's my two cents. But this has been in astrology and in our conversations for the last five years. And here we are. Well, if history has anything to reflect, which I certainly think it would, there was one reprieve, but it was in between two world wars. So there's a quite a symbolism here. Let me throw one other one out that I thought of as kind of a sidebar. Obviously, the, uh, shall we say, cookbook or cookie cutter Libra characteristics of harmony and balance and love, etc. But one else I thought, I'd like your comments on this. The South Node in Libra Could that be where we don't stand up for ourselves? Like we don't speak our mind, we don't speak our peace. Aries, take some action, stand up, be willing to get into a little conflict even. Because we've become so passive that we don't focus on ourselves for the sake of this distorted version of peace? Yeah, absolutely. I go back still to the, you're talking about an individual's chart or a national chart or the world chart, doesn't matter. Go back to the karmic notion of the nodes themselves. And the north node in your natal chart, in in one theory, represents a modality or a sign, sign characteristics that you have developed well in a past life. The south node tends to represent characteristics and traits that you did not do well at, and that therefore are weak in this life, and therefore will be problematic in this life for you, forcing you to try and learn what the real meaning of that that characteristic and that sign, that archetype is. And with Libra, it's absolutely coexistence, justice, fair play, cooperation, and negotiation, and it's constant. It's a cardinal sign, so it never stops. There's always imbalance that needs to be balanced, and equality that needs to be refined, and so on. But that whole idea, the motif, the archetype of Libra, let's get married. You're different. You're a different person than I am. We have different values and different ideas, but we love each other because we're human beings. So we want to get married. Extend that to a national level. Same thing. 
We can't do with it without each other. Russia can't do without us any more than we can do without them. Or China. Or the Middle East. We cannot do without each other. So, what are we going to have? An abusive marriage? That's what we've had for the last 2,000 years. Or are we going to learn, maybe go to a counselor (laughs) and get some counseling to cooperate, to stay together, because we really do love each other underneath all this. But look at the things getting in the way of us being loving, compassionate, fair, just people. What gets in the way of that? What are we taught from birth to believe about each other, that things that are not true, but things that do divide us? What are those things, and how can we outgrow them? Versus blowing them up. That's the child's way. That's the child's way. If I'm angry and you won't listen to me, boom. So that takes nothing. It's very easy to be destructive. And this is one of the whole keys in astrology, Thomas, as you know, to Mars. Mars is aggression. So is Aries. It's about fighting. But the point is fight for something. Don't fight against something. Because if you fight against the thing that you're opposed to, I mean, if you get that involved with it, then you're adding to it. It doesn't help. It perpetuates it. If you know what you don't like, then figure out what it is that you do like and go fight for that. And then you will win. And I'll tell you why, metaphysically. When you fight for something, the intention is is key to everything in life. If your intention is to fight for something, for justice, for equal rights, and so on, then the intent behind that Mars energy is positive. If you are fighting against something, you are fighting destructively. And this part of life is destruction. It's a natural process in the body. But when a person does that, fights against something as opposed to for something, the the intent is to destroy something, not create something. And that destructive intent, which many people don't even acknowledge, guarantees that they will lose in the end because it's destructive energy. So it always comes back on the person who initiates it. Same with constructive energy. You fight for something, believe me, it comes back to you. So, like we mentioned in the intro, a listener to this podcast is here because they want to live positively. They want to live the highest side of this aspect. These are going to be the next 18 months. Stuff is going to be happening around us. I love that, you know, just to punch what you just said. I don't know if this is true. I never saw it, but they say that they asked Mother Teresa why she never participated in anti-war demonstrations. She said, I would never go to an anti-war demonstration, but if you have a four-piece demonstration or a four-piece rally, I'll be right there. That's exactly the point. So if somebody is saying, I want to get the best out of these aspects for the next 18 months, where do we look? Thumbnail sketch uh, to a, an existential question. Where do we look? I don't know. I know what I do. Uh, and I am a Libra. But I have my moon in Aries. So believe me, I embody this very thing. And uh, Grant Louie, an astrologer, wonderful guy back in the 40s who wrote Astrology for the Millions, and heaven knows what he, <laughs> with regard to my son in Libra, Moon in Aries, he said the, the native must ignore the dictates of the moon. Well, good luck. But I've had to learn how to do it because the moon in Aries is a very, and I have it at three degrees, it's a very immature moon. It's smart and it's quick, but it's immature. And my natural impulse is to, if somebody says something I disagree with, my natural impulse is to start an argument. And Librans are also very good at arguing. So I've learned over the years, instead of arguing with, with their point, when someone says a statement that I really find offensive, it's that conscious choice not to argue, but to say what you would do. That's constructive. Absolutely. And I love the connection there. Back to that question that I asked you about Libra. So what you're saying is stand up for your truth. Stand up for yourself. You can do it with love. And that's my, you know, I'm flipped on this axis. So my south node is up in the war zone and my north node is down in Libra. 
So I've adopted make love, not war. And you could even paste that over what you just said. So as you're asking them, as you're standing in your truth, you could say it in love. You don't have to come over as a hand grenade with it. Up to a point, and then I turn into a Libra and a moon. Then that moon gets a hold of you. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Let them have it. Well, that's the that's the walk, right? I mean, there's the spiritual path. (laughs) All right, this has been great. Thank you for the insights, and of course, we're going to be following this. We'll be right here ringside. We're like uh, Frank Gifford and Howard Cosell. You remember those two? (laughs) Ringside. (laughs) That's we'll be, a pretty apt metaphor. We'll be calling the game from the from the side of the ring. All right. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate it. Great comments and really appreciate the tough love conversation of what we could be facing coming ahead. You know, in these times that we're going through, that our souls chose to be here, it's comforting to know that we have astrology as a guide, and it's even more comforting to know that we have Robert Glasscock as an interpreter and guide through astrology. If you'd like to talk to Robert, his information of how you can do that is directly linked right there in the show notes of our episode. And the other thing I would point you to is our Discord channel. Kristen Lawhead is running that and doing a brilliant job. And there should be a lot of conversations around the node change over the next couple of weeks as this is coming out. But continuing the conversation as it all unfolds. That's our Discord channel. The easiest way to get there is at the top of the funastrology.com website. There's a direct link to Discord. Click that and you can get right on in. It's totally free. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time on Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock.